Welcome to Journaling with Nature, the podcast for those who want to turn curiosity into wonder, a pencil sketch into a rabbit hole of discovery, a moment of stillness into a life full of joy. I'm your host, Bethan Burton. Let's open the pages of our nature journals and explore this world together. Hello, this is episode 70. My goodness, how quickly the time has passed. 70 episodes already. And we're at the end of the year. This will be the final episode for the Journaling with Nature podcast in 2021. And next week, we will start a whole new year together. And I'm full of excitement for what's to come. There's going to be so much nature journaling inspiration from all different sources next year. And this beautiful movement is just going to keep growing in ways that we really can't even imagine right now. Before we get into today's interview, I want to say thank you to the folks who have recently joined me on Patreon and for those who have been long-term supporters. Your support means that I can continue to create a new podcast episode every week and invest the time that it takes to do this. I want you to know that you're deeply appreciated. Thank you. So now, if you're a long-term listener of the podcast, you will remember back in August, I spoke with Alabama-based artist Timothy Joe. Tim and I had a long conversation about history and art, the importance of mentors and honoring elders, and a whole lot of wonderful things. And then tragedy happened when half of our conversation didn't get recorded due to a failure of the recording software that I use. Back then, we said that we would have a second conversation to revisit the parts of our chat that were lost, and so in today's podcast, we're going to do just that. It was wonderful to speak with Tim again. He has an incredible love of art, nature, and history that makes others feel happy when they hear Tim speak about these things. During our conversation, we speak about Tim's current artistic practice and also a big goal that he has for 2022 which is to learn from an artistic mentor in Italy. Let's listen. Tim, thank you so much for returning to the podcast. I'm glad we're going to have this chance to revisit our conversation and talk about some new and exciting things in your art life. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. I'm just glad to be back. I'm always up to talking about nature and art and everything, so... I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, last time we made a joke because you said, oh, well, we'll leave it on a cliffhanger because the recording <laughs> <laughs> cut halfway through our conversation. And so the actual cliffhanger was that you were talking about the challenge of uh, being an artist who does both watercolour, where you paint light to dark, and uh, oil paint and gouache where you paint dark to light. So that was where we left it last time. Maybe oh, okay. we can talk about that a little bit. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, you know, I, I play with so many mediums because I really feel like the subject matter chooses for me which one I'm going to use, whether it be watercolor, gouache. If it's something super detailed, fine lines and stuff like that, I tend to dip, stick with the gouache because I can get more details with gouache. Watercolor is more of free looser approach Mm -hmm. that I have where it's like I want you to get the main gist of it instead of just feeling like I you know beat the details over the head so (laughs) I I, I just like to keep it that way but um with birds most of my work with birds have been dealing with gouache than anything else I've done a few watercolor entries in my journal and some oil paintings too but I think gouache is like my favorite to use Mm -mm. tell me about birds because birds are a big theme in your in your art and what is it about birds that that attracts you as a subject and it's so funny because it's like the bird thing actually really came about I, i've always loved nature and the type of bird but it was only till like 2018 where we really started to pay attention and then when the you know the pandemic hit and mm-hmm. stuff like that when i really was trying to learn more about birds so i can just have something else to enjoy out in nature than this as usual and it's almost like it's they found me more than i found them and paying attention to what's out there. Um, like I said, my family farm where the Mississippi kite and the swallowtail kite would appear during the hay season when we were harvesting the hay. Oh, wow. And all of a sudden you see this beautiful black and white bird, which is the swallowtail kite, just doing all these aerial acrobatics. And, and it was just amazing. I'm like, 
what is this bird? You know, <laughs> and, then, and he's just eating bugs and you know grasshoppers and dragonflies out of midair. Oh and, wow! I mean, it really put on a show, and it's like I got to learn more about this and just being appreciative of what's out there. They come in so many different forms, colors, all this stuff, and, and so it's one of those things where I, would, I say, hey, you know, it'd be cool to paint these. Because everything I, I really appreciate, I want to make into art. And I was like, well, let me just start doing birds. I was a little intimidated by doing birds because I'm like, I, I can't draw every feather on his body or whatever. <laughs> like, and so it's like, but I learned in my training as an artist, you don't have to paint every detail. It's like you paint enough information, the brain will know like, hey, that's a bird. Those are wings. Those are, it's cool. So don't sweat the details. <laughs> and and after I start um, my first journal entry, was a, a brown thrasher that was eating uh, seeds out of my yard. So I was like, oh, okay. He's just sitting there mind his business eating. And when I painted him, I was like, that was pretty cool. I really enjoyed doing that. And, I was, and so now I have a journal that's pretty much dedicated to birds, pretty much. And it, it just took off ever since then. What about mm-hmm. my, with the work with the Joe family, dealing with the Alabama Audubon, you know, I'm doing painting demos for them. I'm going to be doing a free uh, demo in January of a St. Hill crane. So that's coming up. Oh, so, yeah. So if you go on their website, you can sign up for, you know, just a free, you know, me just doing the demo. You can paint along with me. I'll show you all the materials and, and we just have a good time. But yeah, the bird thing has really, really taken off where now that I'm totally hooked, <laughs> you know, and I, I, I'll spot them in a heartbeat. I think I, <laughs> I think I spotted some bird like out of nowhere. It's, it's like your eyes start to hone in on them all of a sudden without you having to think about it. Yeah. So, yeah. When so you like, get in the swing of it. Yeah. And yeah. so at the Joe Farm, you do bird and nature tours. And I'm wondering if your work there um, feeds back into your art. Like, do you see things that you want to paint? You just need to paint next and all that. Yeah. I had, yes. Because. <laughs> Going back home, it's you know it's that home feeling. It's like I'm here. Mm-hmm. I'm back where pretty much all started. Um, the family heritage, you know, our family had this land since the early 1900s. You know, uh, you know the great great grandfather was a sharecropper mm-hmm. on that land, and then was able to be able to, to purchase that land. And you know, and fast forward, we had issues where people wanted to take the land from us, and, mm-hmm. and we he had to deal with the the clan coming to the house and you know they actually burnt their house to the ground oh. uh, and my grandfather you know smart man had insurance so they weren't expecting him to have insurance because the land was so sought after it's 200 you know acres of land and you know there's pastures there's wooded areas where he deer hunt um we had cattle back then uh and all, and all sorts of things streams so it was real productive land you can grow anything on that land so it was, it was something to where me being a third generation Black Angus farmer, it's like, you know, there's something we need to do with this. It's it's mm-hmm. a sense of responsibility that, you know, this land was worked over, blood, sweat, tears, everything was all included in that. And for me and my siblings to know that one of these days, you know, we need to do something with this. Let's start now. Let's start finding other ways we can use this land besides just, you know, cattle and my dad's been really cool and laid back and very open-minded to where we told him like hey there's people who want to come pay to see birds and do all this mm-hmm. farm stuff that we do for free all the time he's like really <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the next thing you know is like we see uh, a couple of years ago people stopped at the road next to one of our pastors just with binoculars just looking mm-hmm. on our property and we're like who are these folks staring <laughs> staring at us with binoculars so it was kind of awkward but it turns out they was there for the swallowtail kite when my dad will cut the hay. They, they've oh. been doing this for so long, they knew that he'll be cutting and harvesting hay soon. So they will park next to the highway and look at our property while the birds show up. And my younger brother, uh, he saw this happening and he just reached out to him and said, hey guys, we've seen you for years doing this. Like, who, are, who are you guys? And, <laughs> and, and they, they explained who they were and he said, well, you could just ask us. We'll let you on the property. <laughs> So, mm. you know, but they was trying to be cautious because they know it's private property. They don't want yeah. to be seen as trespassers. So I understand for their safety reasons why they didn't approach us. But December of 2018 is when they came down and, and scoped the whole land. And they was just like, oh, my gosh, we can have so many people here. You have so much variety of birds. And and it's not just birds, but plant life also. And the beautiful thing about the land is it's never been messed with. Mm-hmm. We have our we have our pastures where we keep our cows, but we 
we don't use pesticides. We don't do anything with the land. We, you know, we have natural wells, um, clean water, all this kind of things there. So it's, it's like really what animals want to be at. So that's mm-hmm. where they show up. That's an amazing story. And that, that this beautiful piece of property has been with your family through all those wild ups and downs and Mm -hmm. that it's still there and it's thriving and that you're sharing it with other people through these tours is just such a beautiful story. It it is. And once you see the beautiful thing about seeing the reaction to people when they, it'd be early in the morning, uh, probably like around eight 30 when people start rolling up and everything and the sky is beautiful. I've done paintings of the sunrise there. It's just gorgeous, but they'll come in, they'll get out the cars and they just kind of, do that little look around, like, oh my gosh, like, look at this. And then we tell them, like, this is on a piece of the land. The rest of it is, like, back yeah. that way, yeah. you know, because there's a huge tree line in the back, and they think, well, that gets us where the land stops. Like, no, it, it goes beyond oh, that. wow. So to see them, like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. And and they see birds as soon as they pull up to the yard. It's not like we had to take them far, you know, a bald eagle's been spotted, you know, some oh, down wow. in, you know, woodpecker's been spotted. And, and so they are already excited to be there. And they came from all over. We have folks from Louisiana. We have folks from South Carolina. It's just hours and hours away from us to come see a farm. Not necessarily mm-hmm. bird watch, but mm-hmm. actually know what it is. It's like, oh, we're in the country. You know, wow, this is amazing. And and it also breaks down the stereotypes about what the country is. Like, oh, you go in the country, you know, you go you want to get faced with double barrel shotguns and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, just a bunch of wild, irrational people. It's like, no, we're <laughs> we're we're kind. We we treat you with southern hospitality, you know, like are you hungry? We know places you can go eat. Um, do you need some water? It was like we want to take care of you and make you feel like you're you're one of us, which you do because when they leave, they say, Man, they felt like family to me. The Joe family felt like they're my family. Yes. And we had and we had people say like we adopted you. I was like, cool, we adopted you too. <laughs> <laughs> and and they come back and they bring their friends with them. It's a, yes. I mean, just a nice experience. I love that. Oh, thank you for sharing all that. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, so you have a theme to your work. It feels <laughs> when I <laughs> yeah. when I view your work. We talked about this a little bit in our previous interview, but that theme, that feeling, is is nostalgia and Mm -hmm. old buildings and things with a bit of history. And I, I want to talk about that, about your connection with history and the connection between art and history and how art manages to take a little piece of history and conserve it in, in its own way. It it does. And I, and it took me years to find out, that connection. It's like I I gravitated towards certain things and didn't know why I did it for all the like most of my life where it's like I'll drive by one of the long highways between one of our cities where it's like I will see this old building, this old <laughs> rundown, boarded up uh grocery store. It and it's and actually did an oil painting of it and posted it on my Instagram. And the one of the descendants of the guy who owned it reached out to me saying that's my grandfather's store I, and she showed me a black and white picture of him you know with the little pipe and, oh, and wow. inside the store and it blew me away it's like mm-hmm. I've, I've been trying to find the mystery behind this thing for over 25 years and now that I had the courage to paint it even though people are like oh that's who will paint an old dirty building and I was <laughs> like I would you know that's, that's <laughs> And, and you know, and I, that, that is, and you have to learn how to be comfortable on wh- who you are, yeah. what you like doing, what you like painting. Yeah. Even if no one else under- understands it, it's like <laughs> you know what moves you. I know what moves me. And when I see an old building, an old church, um, the architecture back in those days was like the gothic look to them. Mm-hmm. It's like, first of all, it's rare and you won't see it again because they don't build them like that anymore. So it's like now there's it's precious because now you're the only one of your kind here. And I don't know if you're still going to be standing 10 years from now, 20 years from now, but each time I'll go back home, it's like, it looks a little bit more and more deteriorated. Each time mm-hmm. I go back, I was like, Oh, there's a day coming where it's not going to be here anymore. And it's up to me to save them. So what mm-hmm. I do to save them is like, it's almost like a photographer taking a picture. Like I froze you in time. Yeah. And you'll always look like this, no matter how far the years go by. Yes. You always look like this and you're in this mind forever. And you put it in a scrapbook 
and, and you place it somewhere where it's, it stays safe and you preserve it. And that's what I see my art is, is, is it preserves history. Um, I like history that is not that well known because I want people to learn something about it. And it could be something as simple as an old truck that's just rusting in the middle of nowhere. Well, who mm-hmm. owned it? You know, where are yeah. they now? You know, did they have family? And it gets you going on this kind of like this mystery hunt to where you start to learn more and more about history and realize like, wow, you know, it makes the world be more connected because you may be in the same city or town with the person who has the history to it. And you just never know what you may uncover. So I just love doing that. Mm -mm. I love that. And in your artist statement, you talk about the backstory and, and I'm thinking like, well, in history, there's these grand events that happen that everybody remembers, but then Mm -hmm. there's most of history Mm -hmm. is everyday people going about their everyday lives and but this stuff is valuable this stuff has Mm -hmm. richness and story and and you know if it is an old abandoned truck that it has a story it has a story that's probably really significant to somebody Mm -hmm. exactly and i and i forgot the the that's a term for it where you give an inanimate object like a personality like a truck mm-hmm. is like you don't refer to it as it you refer to almost like a person like mm-hmm. you know you, and you almost kind of want to interview that truck and say like hey what's your yeah. story you know like how long you've been out here yeah you know that kind of thing and it's and people are like oh that's just crazy who has the time for that and i was like that's <laughs> i think that's what's missing where, where people just slow down you know like mm-hmm. i know they're like battles and wars and stuff that we've been taught and we know about it we celebrate the anniversary of it but what about the old little store that this loving couple owned and they served the community yeah. and people loved them and, you know, it was time for them to close the shop because it was either too old to run it or pass away. It's like, when that story going to get told, you yeah. know, and, and that's one of the things like, you know, like somebody need to hear that. Somebody mm-hmm. needs to hear that. And, you know, and I dig in all kinds of history, you know, history, of, you know, my people, black people in that area, you know, had little next to nothing. There's yeah. a lot of poverty still in that area. And we're trying to, bring some you know tourism agro-tourism to the area to generate cash in that area because mm. we, we're trying to reach out to people who cook people who do all kinds of uh, airbnbs and this kind of thing so we're trying to revitalize the area mm. and so i learned that my art can do something part of it. it can play a role in that while people are looking at birds it's like now you have art with birds on a or nature or landscape um we got cattle and it gets Art is such a beautiful thing because it speaks to any language. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's so funny when I actually paint on site or location and people look at me and you can tell like, well, I don't really have to look at them. I can tell they're watching me and they want to see what I'm doing, but they're too yeah. shy to say, hey, kind of look. And they, <laughs> the sad thing is there's a lot of artists out there that be like real protective and stuff and they kind of run people away, that kind of stuff. But I was like, mm-hmm. no, if you want to see what I'm doing, here, here it is, you know? And then they would ask me, well, why are you painting that? Like, what's what's the significance behind yeah. this building? And then I'll then I tell them the story, you know? It could be something that the light hits it the right way and, mm-hmm. and it just kind of shines and glimmers. And that's why I've done with that abandoned store. The light from the morning light was hitting it right on the side of the building and it makes these beautiful uh, shadow and light patterns. And I'm like, that's worthy to be a painting. And so mm-hmm. that's, that's why I created it. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) So you have a really lovely artist statement and I wonder about that, the process of writing your artist statement, because it's, it's very heartfelt. (laughs) Can you tell me about that? that, That's probably like the hardest undertaking I took as an artist. (laughs) You know, when I I grew up doing art my whole life, but it was to the point where it's like, you had to make a decision, like, are you going to be a really serious artist? Like you're going to take that step from it being just a mm-hmm. thing I do, just a thing mm-hmm. I'm good at too. Like I am serious and I'm, mm-hmm. you know, I'm here and, you know, it almost like, you know, my art is a force to be reckoned with. That's how, yeah. that type of thing. And, but the one thing I learned is like, not only did you need your bio, but it's like the artist statement. And then when I read these professional magazines, it's an artist statement, artist statement. I'm like, what is that? I'm like, isn't that your, <laughs> isn't that your bio? And, and I got this book and it said, no, it's not your bio. It's, this is the thing that brings to people in your mind mm-hmm. how you see it. Why did you paint that? Mm-hmm. Why did you use those colors to paint it? What do you feel when you paint it? And it's like, and I couldn't formulate because like, I just love it. I don't know why I just do. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but, but be able to say, I love 
um, old man-made structures and on landscapes or whatever. Like, because I did a poll to where I stacked paintings I had. Here's florals. Here's uh, landscapes. Here's old buildings. And it's like the pile that was the tallest was the one with the old buildings in the landscape area. And I was like, well, that's funny. So why is that so important? And then I had to do more digging. I had to ask myself questions. What do I like to paint? Old buildings. Why do you like to paint them? Because they have history. It feels like I know what's going on here. And I said, okay, so you like history then. And so I start uncovering these things about myself, and which is so weird because you'll assume that you know yourself. Yes. And I, it turns out I don't squat about myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's why I had to start asking. And, and it was like, a, you know, it's, you're really soul searching. Because mm-hmm. me thinking about the passage of time, me thinking about mortality, like one day I'm not going to be here. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I'm going to do while I'm still here on planet Earth. Mm-hmm. And then you see what other people's lives have been. And then you see what they achieve. And then here's their legacy and it's like getting roots and plants growing all over it you know it's starting to wear down Mm -hmm. and it's like you know this meant this was somebody's dream once upon a time and now they're long gone and here's their dream still standing almost like a monument or a testament to what they've done what they sacrificed you know the the hard times they had to do to achieve that it's like and it's almost me painting it was almost like me just clapping my hands like that was brilliant you know awesome you know? <laughs> and, and and let people know like man i'm glad that you were here yeah. I, mean, I may not know you from anyone else but i feel like anybody who been here on planet earth you know you have a story and you want to leave a story and it's one of those things where i want to make sure when i leave mine behind it's like this guy loved nature he loved what god created and his art says it and the biggest compliment i've gotten by my art when people say they saw it it's like I can feel it. That yeah. it just yeah, I can feel like I know this building. I feel like I knew the people who owned this. And they'll and they'll keep struggling. Like, I don't know what to say about it, but it's like it's something grabbing me about your artwork. And one of the things I learned is like the more I pour myself into it, um, ask questions, listening, you know, what's what caught my attention about this building? It may not necessarily be the building as a whole, it may be just the way the morning light hit it and it and it lit up the sign just perfect and then you have mm-hmm. all these beautiful shapes and patterns and colors and i was like if i had a camera that's where i'll snap the picture mm-hmm. and and these snapshots are my collection of what i experienced um i'm hardly ever bored because i'm always thinking about the <laughs> next painting to paint if it's a long road trip there's always something along the road so i was like oh that's beautiful i like the way the, the road bend and and here's this little house over here on the hill or this old post or old barn. And and I was like, man, if I have my easel, I'll stop probably like every mile <laughs> and can paint something along the way because it's always something there. Mm-mm-mm. It's interesting, isn't it? That experience of ta- trying to articulate or write down what is in the heart. You know, it's, you, it's you're talking really about tough. the heart and how do you put that into words? But you did it so beautifully. But it is yeah. a challenge, isn't it? it it's a challenge. And uh, to any artist who's listening, it's going to take years. Um, I remember starting, it was like maybe 2014. And it was like, like I said, it took like four years to do it. Mm. A, a lot of rewrites, a lot of me talking to really close art friends of mine. Um, I had to give this warning. Be careful who you share your artist statement with because they can derail you mm-hmm. and 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 also includes family members um love my family but there's certain things like i need another artist perspective i need someone who not just any arts but someone that i'll resonate with mm-hmm. and it's like you had to kind of and that's what i did i said here here's my artist statement. what do you think and they wrote this and wrote that screw this and they say underlined that said oh i love that part you gotta keep that in there <laughs> and i said okay cool <laughs> And, and it's, it, it takes that. And don't try to make it perfect on the first swing. That was my mm-hmm. problem. I, mm-hmm. I write, write the artist statement. And I got two pages. I'm like, it's perfect. I said, it constantly changes. But during each version of it, parts stay the same. And so mm-hmm. I kept that Mm-mm. because it was the whole thing about it's my duty or mission to do something. It's not something that I just, oh, it's a hobby. I'm just good at it. So that's why I do it. It's like, no, this feels like you know, like a fireman, like a police officer, or, you mm. know, the doctors, like this, there's sick people in the world, and I got to do something about it. You know, there's a fire, I got to do something about it. And history is disappearing. And that's where Mars says, I got to do something about it. And so, and it works with old buildings, it works with birds, it works with flowers, it works. Mm-hmm. 
you know, all this type of thing, all these things we leave behind or we think nothing of it, it meant something to somebody at some point in time. Yes. And what pulls my attention, you know, it may not make sense to me, but it's like the same time I appreciate it. And I've gotten better at putting words on why something grabbed me and why it didn't. Um, I could, I could paint a building eight o'clock in the morning and it looks gorgeous. And then when I see it around three o'clock, I was like, eh, nothing about it. <laughs> you know, it, it's the same building, but it's like, you know, from a different angle, different lighting, it's like, uh, mm-hmm. I could pass on that one. And then I can, <laughs> and then I can come back next week. And I'm like, Whoa, what was I thinking? You know, like there it is. <laughs> and, and that's okay. Cause when you, when that excitement hits you, you don't know when it's going to show up. Yeah. You have to be paying attention and ask your questions. Why did it get me? Why did it draw my attention and write that down as quickly as possible mm-hmm. or record yourself. And once you do that, it's like just more things you can add to the artist statement. It's mm-hmm. one of the toughest things you can write, but once you get it down, it's like it's worth its weight in gold. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll go to shows and they'll say, we need an artist statement in your bio. And I was like, here it is. You know, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and, and even, <laughs> if, even over time, whatever, I can add to it, but it doesn't like it changed the whole message of it. It's just like mm-hmm. another, uh, another amendment to it or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, I, mm-hmm. now that I've been doing the bird thing, I can add birds to my artist statement. I can add old buildings to it. And and it just, it keeps growing. It really grows with you as time goes on. But it's one of the most rewarding things you can do for yourself is to create your artist statement. You know, be flexible. Just ask yourself simple questions. Um, Don't try to have too much influence on you. Like, don't go reading a bunch of other artist statements from other artists you like because you can easily get influenced. Because one of the things I learned about with me, since I speak for myself, the stuff I truly like, it's like, it's out of the way. Mm-hmm. I was like, you, it's like, you had to go out your way to find what I like. You know, mm-hmm. it's not something that's just really very like, oh, I like beautiful buildings or I like this type of thing. I like shiny, this, that, and the other. It's like, no, <laughs> it's like well, the stuff I like, if I could compare my life to an analogy, it's like going through the woods. It's mm-hmm. like, it's not, it's not a paved road. It's not concrete. It's, mm-hmm. it's like, just like, oh, what's behind this? path here you know let's go to truth you know along the riverside or along the stream and it's just you just keep going and you just stop every once in a while and look around and to see how beautiful things are around you mm. and that's why i love you know walking around the um the joe farm down deep in the woods because there's always something around each corner and you see like little landmarks along the way that let you know that hey you're on the right path or you know and it gets you all motivated to see what else is next and that's how you have to see your artist statement is where if somebody picks it up and read it, it's like they walk through your mind or something. And they was like, oh, wow, this is what Tim values. This is why he is so stuck on using this color palette. It may be certain colors you just gravitate to. Um, there may be a certain thing you gravitate to or whatever. And it just keeps telling people, like, this is what's important to Tim. And you're telling when you keep telling the truth about yourself and then people see it and they have something positive to say, not all my stuff hits well, but it just, it comes back, you know, 10 times over when I see it, people like, oh, wow. Like I could tell you love this. I can tell by the way you pay attention to that, or this draws me in or whatever, because you just look in love with nature so much. I can feel it coming from this painting. Mm-hmm. And when I hear that, it's like, okay, I did my job. I, yeah. You know, it's like, I, I can rest easy knowing that the hours, the mistakes, the thrown away paintings, the, the painted over paintings, you know, mm-hmm. The ones that just you know wipe off and start over, you know, it all led up to that. And don't feel like you wasted those years or wasted that paint or palettes and all this kind of stuff. Saying like, well, I screwed up twenty paintings, you know, only to get this, you know, this next one here. But it, but it turned out to be a hit because it took those mistakes previously for you to know, you know, don't paint it like this. You know, get your darks in. You know, pay attention to your composition. And then once you start to manipulate or move things around because you don't have to paint things the way they are but if you like this tree it moved over a couple of feet move it you know yeah. and and i've learned that sometimes even the the scene that i'm looking at it may not be perfect as a painting it could be perfect as real life but as a painting it won't work and so you have to make decisions on well, what's important to you do you mind moving that tree out the way or do you mind you know doing something else with the angle or with the colors and once you do that, you make it your own. And it's like you put your own little seal on it. Yes. Uh, it's funny you said seal because uh, that's something <laughs> I wanted to talk to you about. Yeah, I was, I, I was thinking to like, oh, seal, yeah. <laughs> well, because I have a beautiful 
Timothy Joe original painting in my place, small <laughs> little wave, beautiful beach scene. And I love it so much that the ocean is deeply important to me. And so when I saw this one on your website for sale, it was, <laughs> I knew it was going to be for me. And, but <laughs> the most amazing thing is the way it came packaged because you put so much love and care and detail into the packaging of your pieces, including a wax seal, which is so special. Can you talk about this, about packaging and presenting your work in this beautiful, beautiful way with the seal and all that? Yes, thank you. Uh, that was, <laughs> I, I always see myself as a person like out of time. Like I should have been back in the Renaissance period <laughs> where, where I was like, I should have been back there with the old masters and, you know, they had these old paintings, these dim lit paintings and they have like somebody yeah. sitting there next to a candle pouring wax and you know <laughs> and, and just growing up loving things like that watching uh history well back there i didn't really have cable we was like watching apt which is about public television and they'll have all these old shows and these renaissance type things and and they'll have like the king with the wax and then it's like he stamps his signature on it and it's like this is important now and you know it's almost a, a biblical because they did it in bible times too and so that resonated with me where a king will give some kind of decree or something and then to seal it, he takes the paper and put his seal on there. I was like, it's official now. It's like, yeah. this is not something ordinary. This is not something to take lightly. It's something that's important. And I want people to feel that. You know, I grew up doing calligraphy. I love the beautiful penmanship. I love how it makes me feel when I read it because it's like, it takes skill to do that. And it's pretty. And it's like, when you have a piece of paper where somebody did handwritten calligraphy on it, the last thing you think about is throwing it away. Yeah. Last... So I was like, well, I want my art to feel like something where you do not want it thrown away. You don't want to just, just be laying, you know, collecting dust somewhere and, you know, deal with uh, seeing people, how they present their art and stuff like that is a huge lesson to me because how you package and arrange your art is just as important as the painting itself. Um, as, you know, growing up new, I didn't know that, but I was like, here's a painting. And then I kind of <laughs> handed it to you. But like, there it is. <laughs> you know, like you're at an art festival or something. Like, there's a painting here. You go take it. Mm -hmm. But when they buy it from me, from the website, they see something that resonates with them. They're willing to part with some of their money so they can have it. And it's like that alone is like, you know, it's, it's icing on the cake or whatever. Because mm -hmm. I, I, first of all, I want people to appreciate what I've done. You know, let it be genuine. First of all, I don't want you to put on for me. But when I see that, it's like, that's the highest level of reward. Yeah. The money part is like number two, like, it's okay. Yeah. I mean, I needed to keep going, but it's okay. It's not my thing. But when I know that this thing is going to a home, it's like, I got to send it there in style. You know, I got I to gotta send it there <laughs> to where when they open it, they know that they came from somebody who love yeah. art and it came from somebody who love what you, you know, the support that I got from you. So I, I did homework. I bought some of the I bought some of the crappier wax seal kits from the other stores, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is this is all right. It's kind of all right and everything. But then I discovered like some there are places who actually do like the real legit stuff, like the gorgeous wax, the beads, and the technology is so good now. It's like uh, you don't have to hold the candle sideways if you don't want to. They have these little wax beads, and you just put them in a spoon and a melting pot, and you melt them down. And I got my own custom stamp made with my uh, monogram on it, TMJ, or my initials. And I learned some cool history about those is that mm. when, um, when a person dies, that signia is destroyed with them. Because oh. that's like it's like your signature and like you don't want anybody signing anything for you mm. while you're gone. So, it, it, so it's like there's like a connection between the stamp and the person so it was like if one goes the other one goes <laughs> and so I, I thought that was really cool but but when i stamp first of all watching the wax melt and and mm. it, it, it's so satisfying because i get the the it's like the metallic and it glitters and shimmers and everything and i'll actually will get different color wax and it kind of depends on what the painting is and i'll kind of go inside that I think yours was kind of like a, I don't know if it was blue and gold or something. Yes, but it was. Because it was. It, it was, I wanted to shimmer like the ocean. So yeah. I took that into account when somebody buy it for me, it could be a particular bird. Somebody wanted a bird and it was like, had the colors like the whooping grain. So I had black, red <laughs> and white and mm -hmm. swirled them around and stamp it. And so that just add another layer of thoughtfulness to it where it's like, I think so much of you and, and you're supporting me that I want the wax to reflect that. 
and I stamp it, and it's like something where after it cools off, it's like this is something special, and that's how I want my uh, art collectors feel. I want you to feel just as special to receive as I did to paint it. Mm-hmm. Um, I I do prints; they're not my favorite thing. Um, it, I know they're convenient in ways. But there've been so many times where I have prints and it's like, like this stuff is just sitting here in a box, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, that's twenty people I know that got it already, which is fine if that's what they want. But for me to make something original and know that it's sold and it's like I'm going to give this thing all the bells and whistles, I do that for my original artwork. And it's something that I have people and I laugh at them, <laughs> poor folks. They try their best to open it without destroying the seal and like yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you you, you don't have to get through it, you know. And they're like, I don't want to. <laughs> Uh, Tim, your work looks so beautiful. I don't want to open it, but I know my pain's in there. But then you got this beautiful seal and packaging. It's like, it, they, I mean, I've seen them struggle. Like, what do you <laughs> to get this out? And and one lady managed to get it out with the rope attached and not destroy it. I'm like, how in the world did you do that? <laughs> you know, and she's like, I wiggle it, did this, and open it here. And I was like, that was like a puzzle. But she, she managed to get the painting out without destroying the seal or the rope, and which is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, when I received mine, it was definitely there's a moment of like, just savor this because you have to open it. I know you have to open it, but just savor it for a moment because there's so much care and attention to detail. And just that the color chosen to match the painting is so beautiful. And, you know, you mentioned like when someone actually parts with their money to purchase something that you've created with your love and your hands because it speaks to their heart it's very yeah. much a connective experience isn't it something yes. in your mind and heart has has transferred to someone else's and they see that every day I see the ocean that you created every day and I think of that I think of you and it's it's wonderful and so mm. this extra little um piece of care that you put into the packaging and the sending of this beautiful object it's 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 very very precious it, it is and i i'm just really thankful that people get so much out of it because when i you know get the sale i never tell anybody how i'm gonna package it i never tell them what mm-hmm. color i'm gonna use i, ne- I don't say mm-hmm. anything because they're already excited to get in the artwork and that's all they know and that's how i keep it but i'll struggle because after i package it i'm like it's so pretty i'm gonna send them a picture i'm like don't do it like, <laughs> no you gonna you will blow it no like just and plus the camera don't pick up everything anyway so it's like as nice as these cameras are they can't they can't get off of it. Let them open it. So when they yes. go to the box, uh, mailbox, and open it up, and they see this beautiful packaging, they're like, "Oh my gosh, what is this?" And I have folks uh, to do unboxings, unpackagings of it um, to their loved ones. Uh, one lady uh, had the whippy crane that I sent to. She let her mom open it for Christmas, and she's like, "Here, here, mom," and she just like what is this where did this come from you know so she's like all blown away like this is gorgeous (laughs) and uh and i'm watching it and i was just like oh my god she loves it so but i'm still holding my breath because like she still got open it (laughs) (laughs) and see the painting whatever but she first of all it's like you could tell they like they turn it around they're looking at it and they're like they just like Mm. no they're not like doing the key yeah they're not doing the kid on christmas day they just rip into it and this pieces of paper fly yeah they like they like really trying to i saw what lady like bring me the knife you know like she tried to wedge it and open it yeah because they'll say like save the seal save the seal so she'll get a knife and try to pry the seal open and she managed to keep the seal intact or whatnot but when she opened it she saw there was a woman crane with his you know wings outstretched and the light the shadow She's like, this is beautiful. And she's like, who did that next question? Who did this? Like, who's? And the daughter was like, oh, this is an awesome artist named Timothy Joe. And he, you know, he painted this for you. So, and she's just like, I just love it. And so that is just to see the reactions Mm-mm. was worth this way than go. I seen my clients cry and I'm like, don't you start, yeah. you know, don't, let, don't make me, <laughs> yeah. like, don't you start, you know, don't make me cry. But, <laughs> but, but it hits them on that level where yeah. the art's meaningful. Um, I did a huge commission. It was like a four foot by four foot painting of an oak tree. And this is why I love painting things that are out of ordinary because people just assume, oh, it's a tree, no big deal. And they walk mm-hmm. off. This tree was planted by the great uncle of the my client, the collector. Oh, wow. But the problem is the storm destroyed it, knocked it over. And it, you know, it, it, it broke the heart of him and his wife. I mean, oh. he, he told me like my wife cried her eyes out mm-hmm. when she saw the tree land on the ground sideways. Mm. 
And he was like, and I went to Selma and I saw your artwork in the gallery and, and it spoke to me. He saw like the hay bales. He saw the, the mm -hmm. all this all the stuff I like to paint. Mm -hmm. And he said, like, it spoke to me. He like, he's like, I can't say no more than that. It spoke to me. And he said, I knew you'd be the one to do this job for us because I could feel he's like, I'm from the country too. And when I look at your work, I felt like I went right back home. I went right back to my oh, childhood. Nice. And so when I completed the painting, you know, it's that moment of truth. Like, I'm about to reveal it. I had, um, it was a huge thing, so I couldn't wrap it up the way I want to, but I had like a, a nice little beautiful blanket or a uh, topper over it so they couldn't see it. So I did the unveiling for them. Wow. And, and I could tell it hit her, it, it hit her really hard when she saw it. She just got real quiet and just kind of had her hands up to her oh. face. And, and he was like, I told you, I told you it was going to get her. <laughs> but, but, but to see, the see the reaction of that, you know, because when I'm painting, I'm worried about the brush stroke. I hope I did that right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look good. And to them, when they saw it's like they seen they seen what their great uncle did. They seen the yeah. memories that yeah. and they probably, you know, probably walked under a tree many times or whatever. And to see it lying over after the storm mm -hmm. and then when it broke their heart, you can see the fact that they got something back that they lost. Like, like this is the next best thing to have the tree back planted again. It was like this painting. And they mm -hmm. sent me a picture of it in their house, uh, all that stuff. So it, it was like one of the best experience when that yes. kind of thing happens. There's a lot of power in art, isn't there? <clears throat> there? There really is. And it's one of those things where I encourage like all artists, like, you know, find out what it is. You know, you mm -hmm. owe it to yourself to find out what it is. You may not know what it is, you know, first off, like I didn't know. But you owe it to yourself to search for it. And it... I mean, you have to dig. You know, like, don't be afraid mm -hmm. to dig for it, and because that mm -hmm. makes it that much more rewarding. That my journey to find my artistic voice took five years to do it, but now mm -hmm. that I have it, I'm glad I started when I did. You know, don't put mm -hmm. it off for next year. You need to start now. You know, almost like a therapist. Why do you like? You know, why do you like birds? What's so special about birds? I love the wings. <laughs> what about it? And then, <laughs> and then the birds, are like you know, they can fly. That's that freedom. They can go anywhere that they want to go, and then. And they can get there on their own power, and and it's like it's something more. I know when I was cooped up after the pain when the pandemic first hit, we put a bird um bird feeders and stuff in the backyard and see them just come in and go and just not a care in the world. It it helped me out, you know. It helps mm -hmm. your mental state where it's like you know what, I'm not gonna listen to the news because you know they're just trying, you know most of the time they're just there to scare you to yeah. death. All the time. <laughs> and I won't go here and look at birds. And it's like you know mm -hmm. what, while other, while other people are freaking out and everything, it's like I felt so at peace. So when the pandemic started, you started teaching online and yes. I wonder about that for you. How was this transition to suddenly be doing demos online and oh, teaching on gosh. Zoom and all this? It's, it, it was amazing because um, before <laughs> the pandemic hit, I was just getting out of my shell to go do workshops. Yeah. You know, I did travel to a workshop in, you know, different cities, you know, a couple of hours away from me. And I was like, man, this is fun. This is amazing. Then the pandemic hit and we can't do anything more. And I was a little heartbroken, but part of me would not be like, well, I guess it's time to wrap up that whole chapter. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess there's no more teaching because you can't do anything. And and that didn't sit well with me. It's like, no, I just found it. You know, it's like, I just found it. I'm not going to let yeah. it just take it away from me that easily. And, you know, I, I know technology, so I'm not, it's not a big issue. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get this account and I'm going to have all this thing where I can be on longer than 45 minutes. And and just this is the scary part where you put it out there for people like I'm teaching yeah. art. It, you know, <laughs> it, it costs this much. You know, it's not an arm and a leg. It's just unreasonable. And I was like scared. They're like, nobody's gonna buy. It. <laughs> like nobody's gonna buy it. And it's so scary because you put yourself out there. Yes. It's like going on stage and and it's yeah. like imagine going on stage to I don't know tell a joke or perform or whatever. <laughs> and imagine that everybody in the audience have a tomato in their hand. So it's like, and it's all they like they can throw this at me if they want to and then you but you hope they don't but you <laughs> but you have to put yourself out there you have to have so much love for your craft that it overrides your fear yes. of what somebody could say or rejection that you know I, my biggest fear was some super artist coming in and saying like, oh he's not that good because he didn't do this that and the other or whatever and that's the thing about breaking free from those restrictions i didn't go to art school i didn't go to college for school I, i'm an engineer but I'm glad I didn't. Sometimes I'm glad I didn't go that route. Sometimes like maybe I should have went that mm -hmm. route. But right now I'm glad I didn't go through that because I don't want to get molded to something that I don't fit in. 
I don't think uh, Stretch will say, like, yeah, go out to chasing old buildings and nature and go chase that stuff down and paint it. I, I doubt it. Yes. But I'm glad that, you know, I had that freedom to where I didn't feel pressure to paint a certain way because I had to pay bills with it. It's like I had yes, an income. Exactly. So it was like, so use art to explore and have fun and not say, I got to pay bills with this. So, oh my gosh, um, somebody want to, you know, another painting of grapes, you know, so I got to pay, nothing wrong yeah. with grapes. They look, I mean, <laughs> but it's just something like, well, you feel like you're forced to do something. Yes. And me with my art, where it's like, I can paint whatever I want and however I want to do it. And knowing that this is my voice you know, and it's, I'm responsible for what I say with this voice. And then to hear people responding to it, you know, it's another lesson for me because they'll see things in the painting that I totally didn't see. And I was the one that painted it. And I was like, I like how he did this part here. I was like, like, I'm like I don't see it. Then I'm like, oh. <laughs> and I can't even say I meant to do that because I totally didn't. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I'll just try to hurry. That's why that looks like that. <laughs> Well, yeah, and you're right. You you talked about like that moment of vulnerability when you when you put yourself out there, and then you wait. Is anyone gonna enjoy this? And then and then they come because when you put yourself out there with an open heart and with honesty and with just like this is what I love. Do you love that too? Then people step yes. forward, and then you then you've got this back and forward with people yes. who see it and get it and feel it. It is amazing when I first got onto Instagram and start sharing my artwork because you know sharing your artwork on in the internet is dangerous as it is because people yeah. <laughs> people can say whatever they yeah, want. Yeah. <laughs> but um but it's it's cool because you, it's like you put it out there and it draws the right people to you. Yeah. I mean the, exactly. the folks who don't like what I paint, fine. They don't follow me, they don't they like it, on. they don't do anything mm -hmm. and move on. And it's okay. They like something else. I just say you're not my audience. You know, here's a person that likes to paint this, you know, I'll redirect them if they come to me and say, hey, I really like somebody to do, you know, African-American inspired art. And I was like, okay, well, I am African-American. I do art, but I know what they're talking about. So I was like, well, yeah. this person is awesome at doing this. But you see my work and and I have people who are not necessarily growing up in the South or growing up in the country. They just like mm -hmm. the look of it or they like the brush work I put out or, or they just been saying, I just like the way it makes you feel. Mm -hmm. Like it feels cheerful. Like you took an ordinary object and made it look pretty. That's what it comes to like. It's like, like, it, like, it's like, it's just a building, but it looks so pretty. And that's what they kept saying. Like, it's just a building, but look at it. You know, it's like, I, and then they'll say like, I want to see that building in real life because of how it looks. Yeah. And it's all about presenting things to people to know you have an artistic voice and that voice is meant to be heard. Mm -hmm. And this is my personal belief. The fact that you have that voice or that message is meant for somebody in the audience. Yes. The, the issue is you don't know who they are. Yeah, <laughs> but but the thing is, you have to be responsible enough to put it out on a platform where it can broadcast, almost like you're doing a broadcast or radio station. Yeah, and it's like the right people will say, "Hey, what was that? Turn that back," and they'll dial yeah, back into yeah. you. Like, and then and then that's gonna start thinking about, "Wow, this person like history. This person thinks mm -hmm. history is so important that he'll paint about it." What's his name? What's it? What is it like to do? Oh, you know, what's her name? And then they start searching and they go on your website and they see your bio and your artist statement that you worked yes. so hard for. <laughs> and then and then you build that connection because one thing I learned from a, I have a great uh, vendor friend. She does like vending and stuff like that. It's not an art, but I learned from her because she is like, you know, you give people the freedom to look at your merchandise or what your product is. You be knowledgeable of what you have. If they have questions, you should be able to be the one to answer them. And so when people come to me and they ask me like, oh, this page is beautiful. Well, why is it like this? Or why is it painted like this? And then I start explaining it. And they know how knowledgeable I am. They start getting more comfortable with you. And that's what art is. People, buy, they don't buy your art. They buy you. That's what mm -hmm. they're doing. Yeah. And, and I learned that it's not necessarily the painting itself that gives it value. It's the artist that's behind it. Mm -hmm. I sold majority of my artwork because people knew who I was and what I represented more than Oh, it's an old building because anybody can paint an old building, which is nothing wrong with that. But I learned it's because Tim did it. That's why I want it, you know. Mm -hmm. And and I had somebody who buy who bought like a drawing of mine of an old storage shed my grandmother had. My grandmother lived to be one hundred six years old before she passed. And wow. you know, so we this old shed that used to have the big tub, and back then when they had refrigeration, they salted the meat or whatever, and that's how they preserved all their all their food. And I, I did a picture of it. And then when I told my coworker, like, oh yeah, we used to play around there and this happened. Mm -hmm. I went I went inside and 
saw this huge thing here and there was like a whole you know salted pig in there it freaked me out when i was a kid oh, wow. and he was just laughing like oh my gosh that was so awesome how much is it i'm like huh <laughs> you know and like what what do you want to buy it or something he's like yes yeah. so like, oh, he's like i want it because of what mm. it meant to you whatever yeah. and how how excited you were to tell me about it mm. he's like I, I want it and that's the same thing when people go on vacations they go on vacation for the experience your art can make uh someone have an experience yeah. that either they had in the past that it reminded them of something or it could be something brand new and they could just be drawn to how peaceful you were when you painted it and it just, just comes off that way mm -hmm. um, i mean painters are so much like people there's certain people you get around you just feel good yeah because they're nearby you don't know their name don't know where to go come from <laughs> anything but it's like i like this person i don't know why but mm -hmm. i like them. and then some people are like oh you know dodge this person you know <laughs> You get all kind of creep creep vibes from them, but <laughs> it, I mean it's it's the same way with art. I had art to yeah. pull people in, and I also made some paintings that pushed people back. And mm -hmm. no, not it wasn't to be rude or anything. It's like, well, they didn't resonate with it, and that's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you have recently been doing something a little different, a little new, which is to make handmade journals, and I'd love yes. for you to talk about your experience. <laughs> with this new form of creative expression yes um never it's just so funny because you, you never look for these things to happen you just have to respond when the opportunity <laughs> knocks you, just, you have to open the door when when you hear the knocking um <laughs> there's this journal i love like i said the viewers can't see it but i'm holding it right now you know it's a thick handmade paper deco yes. edges it looks like something that was buried years and years and years ago <laughs> and, I, and i dug it up and i love that because i love <laughs> i love indiana jones i love the guy or person who goes exploring and find these old relics but the downside is they stopped making them this was like right when the pandemic hit and i was like oh you know there goes another thing that happened because of the pandemic mm -mm. and I'm almost finished with this book. It's kind of ragged because I, I I love it so much. So I, it, it's been through a lot. And I was like, well, now what I'm going to do, because I went to store at the store trying to find something close to it and couldn't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the idea hit me out of nowhere. I was like, well, if you don't like what they have. Why don't you make one? Yeah. And, and you know, and I'm like, oh, I don't have the time for that. I'm, I'm paying. I can't do it. But then it's like, wait a minute. Going back to that whole wax seals and the old mm -hmm. books and tomes and stuff and book making is like another art form and when it's clicked on me like this is another art it's not using paints oil paints or gouache but you're using your hands and your craft yes. and stuff because what better thing to learn how to do to put my art on something that i've made you know it's like there's a lot of great manufacturers out there a lot of great paper makers out there and they make these products and it's like i feel good that my art's on something that's worth it it's good mm -hmm. quality and and then here's the opportunity for me to take some of the materials they use and make it to where it suits me and not only do my art go in it but also made the book on top of that so it's like now i add a whole nother layer of creativity to my artwork yeah to where i created what it's in and um so i had a great friend and uh, he told me like yeah there's a couple of book binder uh, teachers that's in your area so I made my appointment. I'm like, I'm going back to school again. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, going, I'm, going, back to, I'm going back to school to learn how to do um, book binding. And I and I walk into her studio and you, you see the big old antique book press. You see these old huge desks. So I was already in love when I first walked in and saw all this equipment. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I could walk away and, sit, and walk away and be happy at this point. But uh, she was super nice, you know, because you know, learn something new. I've been doing art my whole life. So it's like, I'm comfortable with everything I need to do. You know, I consider myself not in, to be in the most humblest way. It's like I'm considering myself to be an expert at it because I've been doing it for so long, learned so much. But to be able to go back down to ground zero where it's like you don't yeah. know anything and you are starting yeah. fresh. And and so I was like, should I buy this? Should I buy that? She's like, duh. She's like, just buy the paper you want to make it out of and let <laughs> me do the rest. I'm like, okay. So I walked in there with five sheets of Arches uh, cold press paper. It's rough, mm -hmm. uh, 140 pounds. And because I couldn't find the ones that I really wanted, which just came out of this book because it's so hard. And plus, it's super expensive, even if you do find it. I think some of those sheets were like $27 a sheet. Mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. I was like, so anyway, I went there and she showed me the, the needle, the thread. You put the beeswax on the thread, you stitch it. With, and I was like, this is a whole nother art form. And, yes. and so I made my first couple so far. 
I made one for my daughter. She was so happy. She's like, Daddy, can you make me a journal? Because she's, she's an <laughs> oh, artist wow. too. And I, I mean, they're not perfect. It's not something I'll sell to anybody because I'm still learning. But once I perfected the point where it's like, okay, I, I have it. Now I can share with other people. Now I know people say, well, it costs a lot because, you know, it does. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like, if you want something high quality, if you want something yes. that's going to last you, my end game with my journals is for something for it to be passed down even yes. to my children or if I make so many of them that somebody would say, I'll buy the whole journal. Okay, well, yes. there it is. And I had a lady ask me that, like, do you sell this? And I was looking at it like, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard to part with. You're right. You're right. Now, I don't know. She would say some outrageous dollar amount. I was like, okay, I'm considering it. <laughs> but I'm glad she didn't say that because I didn't want to be like, oh. Yeah. But, but the fact that somebody loves what I do so much that they'll be yeah. saying, they'll even ask me that question yeah. says a lot because they, mm -hmm. you know, she was like, the way you get excited about nature, the way you got excited about painting and you describing why you do what you do. And she was just asking like, man, it's like, do you even sell these journals? I'm like, well, not yet. <laughs> but but the journal making thing is just another thing I can share with people. Um, yes. When they come to the Joe farm, I have my artwork there. And what awesome thing would be to have a pile of journals there. And, yes. you know, if they have like um, some paints or something, a little, they have make these nice watercolor kits. Um, you know, done stuff with art toolkit or whatever. They make some great stuff. You can carry in your pocket, a whole palette yes. in your pocket and just your little watercolor brush and you can make some beautiful art with that. And so I love the fact that, you know, we, we work together and I did a demo using their products. And so the journal thing is like the next big thing for me to create these, um, put my signature on them. Of course, I'm going to find a way to put wax in it. Um, <laughs> it's a, maybe I on the front page, I might pour wax and just stamp it and be like, there's yes. the insignia or whatever. <laughs> and, and it'd be something special. And I love yes. the old, uh, the old timey print, you know, the back with the, um, the farmer's almanac, these little old, um, I guess it's called typology where you have the beautiful calligraphy and they're all embroidered. Um, yeah, if you've ever seen awesome. those old, if you ever seen those old Bibles that had like the big ornate letter that starts the paragraph and it's beautiful and it's color. It's got gold stuff all over it. I was like, well, I may not go that far with it, but it's like, I want something special to be in each one of these to say, like, you yes. got something that's original. Yes. And so I, I may come up with that later on, but I want to get journals like this in the places where people mm -hmm. are brand new to it. Cause a lot of, a lot of people I noticed, they want to paint, they want to do nature journaling, but they're too scared. Yes. to do it and you think well, what's so scary about it because they're scared of judgment they're scared of like somebody seeing it's like oh that's not that good or yeah you need you need more practice or something but it should be for just the pure enjoyment of i'm going outside i'm taking colors and i see something i like and i want to i want to duplicate it in this book and i'm like you shouldn't let anything stop you from doing it because yes. like you you fell in love with whatever subject matter it could be a butterfly or a caterpillar or some kind of plant, whatever, like you owe it to yourself to go do it. And you shouldn't let what somebody think or judge your artwork against someone else that you shouldn't do it. And I just tell my students when I've been my workshops, if you was on an island all by yourself with no one around, no social media, yeah. no nothing, and you paint a slew of paint, you'll think that'd be the best things on the whole planet because that's all you know. And like, that's how you should feel. Yeah. The only reason why you said your paint was bad because you saw someone else's work. I love and, that. And, yeah. and you start comparing it. I'm like, stop it. And like, <laughs> you know, our signatures are the same. You sign your name, even if I were to sign your name, it wouldn't look like yours. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets upset about that. So why are you getting upset? Because your artwork doesn't look like someone else's. And the reason why you get upset, because you want their artwork to look like yours and vice versa. And I'm like, no, just be the best artist that you are. And that's why I tell um, my students in my Zoom classes where I teach either online or in person, my job is to coach you to be the best artist that you are. We all have different lanes. And I just want to make sure you go down the lane that you meant to go on. I'll ask them, what do you like to paint? Oh, well, I love birds. Cool, you know? And I'll start teaching. And almost kind of like I do a customization where it's like, we'll learn mm -hmm. about color theory. We'll learn about composition, which you all need. But then I will give you like little extra tidbits where it's like, well, if you like landscapes and stuff like that, well, you know, you might want to look in this direction. You know, mm -hmm. pay, pay, pay attention to the lighting. Light is everything. Um, don't be scared to move, you know, a building over or, or tree over. Don't be afraid to do all that stuff. And let me know how it comes out. And so mm -hmm. when they leave the class and they all sat on the last day of class, including me, because I don't want to see anybody go. But <laughs> they'll say, like, 
Tim, I learned so much. You know, I was stressed out about the pandemic. I was in the house all day with the kids and it was like, you know, but I got, and one lady said she bought an actual desk for her house where she do her journaling. Oh, wow. Cause she, cause she took this class and loved it so much. Like I want to dedicate this spot in the house where I just journal and paint stuff and you know and it makes me feel good and i'm doing something that I stopped doing years ago and that's the stuff that was like you know when i walked away from the class i was like that was that was worth it you know it was worth the planning and hoping that everybody's having a good time and i hope nobody's bored but when they when they see me teaching they know like oh wow he is really enjoying what he's doing you know yes. and, and it rubs off on them and they rub off on me too because they are so eager to learn something that's mm-hmm. been it's like it's something they've been trying to chase, but it always kept getting away from them. And uh, to know that I gave them some tools and tidbits, like okay, now you can catch it this time. Which yes. wherever you're running from, <laughs> wherever it feels like that's out of your reach, I'll, I hope that I help you put it. You know, it's closer now than what it was before. Mm-hmm. That's so sweet. I love that. Mm-hmm. And talking about learning new skills, you've got this new skill going on with the with the book binding, but there's mm-hmm. something yes. else big happening in your life coming up which oh, yeah. i'd love for you to talk about your italian your hopes for this italian trip oh wow yes this this is one of the ones that it's you know how you set a goal that's so big it scares you mm-hmm. and, it almost, and it scares you to the point where you kind of run backwards like i don't think i want to do this and, and, yeah <laughs> but um it's something that even now with the pandemic you know of course there's all fear like what if something goes wrong blah blah blah. what if i never make it there but um i have to share this with you as a kid um you know parents knew I was good at art stuff like that my auntie she was like kind of like the patron where she's like I want to help you know Tim get to be better why don't he come spend the summer with me and do these art classes and stuff like that now it must have been like in the seventh no it's probably further back than that like the fifth grade and um it time was me to go and my mom just like oh no some a bear may attack my baby or something in middle <laughs> Chicago a bear attacked me whatever <laughs> but it, it was something where like it made me sad it was like I was so close to feel like I was going to achieve something learn a, a new experience that could have set me on a whole nother trajectory mm-hmm. where I could be something di- totally different than what I am now mm-hmm. and and I learned how to do art stuff on my own because I was trying to make up for what I didn't learn before I didn't have a mentor mm-hmm. I didn't have a teacher and so as I learned to be more a professional artist and getting the oil paint, there's this awesome artist. I, I love her to pieces. Um, her name is Jennifer McChristian. And she was one of the ones where I kind of almost saw her as like a, a mentor figure because mm-hmm. since I, I grew up and I have one all the time, but her artwork was so beautiful and I liked the way her approach is. She was one of the first ones where I actually reached out to her. She gave me helpful tips. She went like, oh, mm-hmm. just read my book. Oh, buzz off. She didn't do any of that. She was like, well, this is what I do. And I use these colors and just walk me through it. And so she's teaching these Italian workshops. She does it every year except for, you know, 2020. And I was like, well, I just said to myself out loud, wife was there to me. I was like, oh, it'd be amazing to take a class with her over in Italy. She goes, well, why don't you do it? And I'm like, <laughs> but, and it's like, you know, deer caught the headlights. Like, I don't know. Huh? You know, it's like, <laughs> what? And it's like, because, you know, I had to learn how to get over this being in a country stuff like that is great but they are always like a lot of stigma when people say oh go somewhere far away they're like oh there's nothing out there that's the outside world everybody's mm-hmm. nuts you know stay in your own backyard <laughs> and and you know if you hear that uh, uh too many times you'll start it'll start to take root in your mind whereas like i always felt like i can't go but so far like there's a boundary around alabama or maybe 50 miles outside of alabama that i just can't cross for whatever reason and it just felt that way that's but for me yeah, but for me to think about, I'm going to go, you know, offshore. I've, now I've been to Bermuda. I've been to places, but that's after I met my wife and stuff. And she's way more outgoing and it rubbed off on me. But Jennifer McChristian, her work is beautiful. And I've seen pictures of the town that they're in. And I was like, that is gorgeous. And like to take my journal. Now that's an oil painting thing, plein air painting outdoors. So I'll have that there with me. But at the same time, I'll definitely will sneak one of my journals in there with me. <laughs> and, 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 and dudes like it'd be so cool to come back to the United States and say hey I got a book full of scenes I did in Italy in yes. my journal and it's mine I took it you know I, I took part of Italy back home with me in my journal and I was like well and I was like well how much it takes to get there and I looked at the price tag like oh <laughs> like, <that's, laughs> it, but let's say but it's fair because like you know you are going overseas you know hotel you got a teacher at your fingertips the whole week and and I was like well how I'm going to get there. And then my, my friend said, why don't you start GoFundMe? 
Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I got kind of, I'll be honest, I got kind of embarrassed to ask for help like that. Cause I'm like, oh, they're going to think I'm scamming them. Um, they're going to say, Tim, you got a job. You know, you're an engineer. What do you need that for? But like I said, that's for my family to support them. I, I want my art to support my art. So that's yes. what I'm trying to work towards. And, you know, I just, in October, I bit the bull and said, like, okay, I'm going to start it. I'm going to open it up. And this is how yep. much I need, just to be honest. And, you know, I, I'm doing pretty good. Like, the first two months or so, like, I'm up to, like, 1600 right now. Uh, $1,600 there now. Um, what I need is, like, 7300 or something like that. So I was like, okay. But it never hurts to ask for help. And yes. that's and that's one of the things that I had to be reminded of because I'm from the thing where just work hard, you know, you get it, you know, if, if uh, you generate the money by selling this and selling that. But sometimes it's like, that's a lot of art to push. And I don't know if I can make that just by selling art. <laughs> but, but for me, to like I said, go back and share, like, this is what I'm trying to do. This is, you know, you link your bio, everything to there. Yeah. And, and I had people who gave and like, I don't know who they are because they can be anonymous. Yeah. And I was like, wow, they don't even know me. But but of course they did. They would say like, oh, I went on your website. Oh, I love what you're doing. I hope you make it there. I hope you get there. And they, they're they like, yeah. root, root it for me. And that's something like new where I never had nobody to root for my goals like that. Because I saw like, man, this thing is so big. What if I don't make it? What if I don't raise enough money? But my brother told me like, you, you're guaranteed not to make it if you don't drive. You're guaranteed mm-hmm. not to get there if you don't put forth the effort. So and, and he was like, well, people know you. You've been doing demos and teaching. And it's like, they know you're not a scammer. They know you love art. So it's like, what's the problem? So yes. so I got brave and and put it out there. And I sent you the link, whatever, so you can uh, share. Yes, we'll put it but, in the show notes. And, and like I said, and any, amount, any amount is greatly appreciated because like you say, when I get a donation, what would it be, $10, whatever, it's like somebody just saying like, I believe in you here. Yes. I believe you here. And then that's like that's right. the fact that people are willing to do that. You really know how people feel about you. if They're willing to, to spend money on you. And it, it doesn't matter what the amount is. And I was like, you know, I'm grateful to you. I'm grateful to everybody who's been supporting me and listening to what I've been saying and putting up with me raving about how awesome art is all the time. But I, <laughs> I, but, but I can't get enough of it. And it's to me to want to go on this trip to Italy. It's like me making up for when I didn't get to go to Chicago yes. as a young, like, like mm-hmm. I got robbed out of the opportunity to share some, learn something big. I don't want to repeat it now at 39, mm-hmm. you know? So it's, it is like saying, I need help getting there. And I, I believe it'll all work out in the end, but like I said, it's, it's there. And if you feel led to donate, whatever, you know, of course I will say thank you in advance for just entertaining the thought. Yeah. Well, this is the wonderful thing about new technologies, new ways of interacting via the internet, because someone who sees your work on Instagram and and loves it or watches a demo that you've done or listens Mm. to you on a podcast and thought, Mm. oh, yeah, I really liked him. I really like his his way of being in the world and the way he shares. Like supporting you, there's... Um, what am I saying? There has to be a channel to be able yeah. to support someone. And when you do take that step, even though it feels uncomfortable to say, it does. Hey, <laughs> it does. I want to go to Italy and learn this, you've opened up that channel. And then that person can show their appreciation for you by um, by supporting you in that way. And only by opening that channel, even though it's uncomfortable, you, right. you, you allow for that support to flow to you. And that's yeah. that's really beautiful. Yeah, it is because you know it, you're putting like I said you're putting yourself out there on stage again and everybody has a tomato yeah. in their hands and yeah, they, yeah, can, yeah. <laughs> they, can, they can throw it at you at any moment but it's like <laughs> but like I said it's, it's supposed to be and in, in, um, me and my brother you know my family we're like our own hype people you know because my younger brother you know he just he started the birds and nature tours at the farm and of course it's a mm-hmm. family thing now because it's much bigger than one person mm-hmm. but we, we'll hype each other up and say like you know mm-hmm. what if you don't do this, and then that thing about that, if I don't take this step and leap forward, yeah. I'm gonna regret it. And I'm gonna regret it just like I regret not being able to make it. Now it might have been my decision back then, yeah. but it's like now it is. So it's like, yeah. And, and this is what I love to do when I go out and paint on location. I always see as a hunt, like what I'm gonna find and what I'm gonna bring back with me. Yes. And the thought of going to Italy, of all places, and seeing the culture, the buildings, the landscape, everything. And to take what I've learned and create art, looking at it and bring it back with me, it's like, that's yeah. an experience that I cannot duplicate. It's like, that's like yeah. one of those experiences of a lifetime where it's like, 
when you look back 20 years down the road, you'd be like, I'm glad I jumped. I'm glad I took that leap of faith yes. to do it. And and part of that leap of faith is to ask people you know and people you don't know, like, I need financial help to do that. And, yeah. and you know, and don't be ashamed to, to say that because, yeah. you know, it feels the other way around. You know, I want to be the type of person that if somebody's trying to get to where they're trying to go, either learning an art skill or something, I have a, hey, I help you, get, I help push it a little bit closer to your reach, whatever. It may not be yeah. much, but I want yeah. at least nudge it an inch closer to you. And that's that's one of the things where I feel like it's a blessing to do it. And and I believe that when you do good like that, it'll come back to you. Yes, absolutely. Oh, Tim, it's a beautiful goal. And it's been so, so nice to chat with you again and to yes. hear all about the heart and the art and the whole thing. It's been so, so good to chat with you again. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. And I just want to thank you for having me and, and also just not having me on the show, but just doing what you do, period. You know, it's like it's one of the things like it's, it's a great work, but it's like somebody has to do it. And then when <laughs> you have somebody who is genuinely loves nature, I, I see your Instagram story. It's like, oh, she's out in nature. She sees this and she sees that. And, you know, the kids with her. And, and it's like teaching a whole nother group of people <laughs> that's going to come <laughs> up behind you how to appreciate and love nature. It's like that should be applauded. That should be celebrated. And, and you know, the, we may not reach a million people all at once, but you know what? Those several hundreds or thousands, um, my best experience this year was being on that podcast with you, doing that journey of the bee on that flower. You yes, know? for International and, Nature yes, Journaling Week. That was mm-hmm. perfect. That is definitely my highlight from 2021. If I, yeah, I, wow. I, I, I keep a journal where I write my thoughts in too, besides painting. And that's like at the top of the list because to see that little kid in London stayed up at one something in the morning, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, if I didn't see anything else, that's going to be with me forever to see like this 11 year old kid, like listen to what I'm doing and, and ask his mom to stay up late to paint along with me. I was like, that's, that's worth its weight in gold. So I want to say thank uh, you just for that. Oh, that's so nice. There was so much warmth and love for you uh, during that workshop. Oh, I keep reading the transcripts. So when I I got this book, (laughs) I was like, this is awesome. And and it's, it's definitely a, a confidence booster. Mm-hmm. And not saying not saying I feel down about anything, but when I read that, it's like it lets yeah. you know like what you're doing matters. What you're doing yeah. is making a difference. Keep going, keep running, keep doing yes. all you can do because you don't know who may hear you. You don't know what they yes. what it'll lead them down. Because like I didn't have that mentor like I wanted back when I was a kid. Yes, maybe that kid we're gonna go up and he may do something totally different with art and nature that we had never seen before. Who knows or anybody in young old background doesn't matter yeah absolutely oh it's an honor to know you tim thank you again same here same here thank you so much i hope you enjoyed this conversation with tim i was very happy to have the chance to revisit our conversation I always feel energized and uplifted when I chat with him. It's like his enthusiasm creates this bubble of positive energy and inspiration for others to float on. (laughs) If you have enjoyed this episode and would like to support Tim's dream of traveling to Italy to expand his knowledge of oil painting, please do follow the link in the show notes to go to his GoFundMe page. I know that every donation helps and that Tim will very much appreciate your support. So here we are at the end of the episode, at the end of the year. However this year has been for you, I'm sending a huge amount of love your way and hoping that you have a safe and restful and restorative end to the year. And I'm looking forward to being here with you again for the next chapter in 2022. Thank you so much for listening. See you next week. <music>